Hey, it's Becky. Today, I'm looking inside the Ember Wave, a wristband that helps with temperature regulation. It's the only wearable I've ever seen with a Peltier cooler in it, so keep watching to see me try it out, take it apart, and analyze the design and manufacturing of the circuitry inside. The Wave 2 comes in packaging made from paper and cardboard, and all seems to be recyclable, except for a couple bits of clear plastic. The screenless device comes with a magnetic wristband already attached, a USB cable, and the charging base. It's meant to be worn on the inside of the wrist, where your skin is relatively more sensitive. The included manual describes how to use the simple button interface for heating and cooling sensations. Press one button to start a program, and the device will change temperature in waves. Here in this thermal imaging, you can see the temperature fluctuation of the thermoelectric heat pump when it's running a program. The sensation can help provide your brain some relief when you're experiencing hot flashes, night sweats, and other types of body temperature dysregulation. I really like that you don't need to configure an app, set up a Bluetooth connection, or sign a massive EULA to get access to the majority of the device's functionality. Of course, there is an app which unlocks more elaborate programs for the hot and cold sensations. Fun fact! French physicist Jean-Charles Athanase Peltier, who discovered the thermoelectric effects that make the ember wave work, was an experienced watchmaker before his research career, which was enabled by an inheritance his wife received. I'm guessing he would probably think this thing is pretty neat. The first step in taking apart the ember wave was to remove the band. It was held in place by standard spring-loaded watch band pins. From there, it seemed logical to try to detach the plastic shell surrounding the Peltier cooler by prying, and sure enough, it had been glued in place. Underneath it are some magnets that help stick it to the charging base, and a visible next step, screws. Then the metal enclosure came open like an Oreo cookie. The smaller metal bit had been protecting the main circuit board, and at this point, the device is still functional. We can see into the side of the interface area with the two buttons and a color changing LED. The Peltier cooler is all the way on the other side of the metal enclosure. As I continued past the point of no return, I discovered the chunky battery makes up a lot of the thickness of this device. I broke open the Peltier cooler as well as the charging base and got to work checking the circuit boards out under a microscope. And this is where I invite my channel's favorite electrical engineer, David Craner, to take a closer look at the parts on the boards. Oh, hey, hey David. I found this next to the grill. I don't know. Need it back. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. This is sunny. Welcome. Hello. All right, what you got? I have the Ember Wave. Ember Wave. Two. Two. The most interesting thing I think is the temperature changing. The Peltier cooler. Yeah, and the things that are related to it. You can see the machining lines from the tooling. I wonder if, if each part is actually individually milled or if this is cast in some way and the machining lines just came through. And you can see here's the Peltier cooler and then it has the, uh, the flex PCB that goes to the other side. I couldn't get it off, but I figured there isn't much there except that flex PCB. And I imagine we're gonna, there's a connector here. We can look at it on the scan. Plug too. straight down. And that's how the Peltier cooler plugs in to the circuit board. And then that's a natural Some segue. That have had better times. <laughs> Those are for the uh, <laughs> for the charging, for the charging pins. Uh, the Peltier cooler attaches here. That's the other side of that connector. Oh yes. Cool. So why is the board shiny? She asks, totally not knowing the answer already. <laughs> Uh, the board is shiny because it's covered in what's called a conformal coating. So often if there's, you know, environmental concerns about a circuit board, like if it might be exposed to moisture or condensation or sweat maybe, they'll coat it with some kind of like acrylic or silicone coating to protect the chips and circuitry on, this, on, on it. While this device doesn't purport to be completely waterproof, they don't want you to go swimming while wearing it, uh, yeah. it, it does 
um, makes sense that it being close to your body and a temperature regulation thing that the uh, part of the device gets hot and cold. And if you're in a humid place, getting cold is going to create condensation. So even if you're not sweating into the device, uh, the device's function itself can make it form condensation. So Yeah, exactly. Uh, you can see we got these fun little tack switches up here. Yep, those are the two switches that correspond with the hot and cold mode switches on the outside mm -hmm. of the enclosure. And then that LED in the center uh, is color changing. And then there's another LED. Oh, uh, probably the white the LED. The white LED, yeah. I think yeah. it's only used for um, charge status indication. Mm -hmm. So this is a white LED. It's interesting mm -hmm. because it has this yellow on it. There's no, there's not actually such a thing as a white LED. White LEDs it's are a, actually blue, right? are actually blue, mm -hmm. and then they put a, a fluorescent material that takes the blue photon and then kicks it out as a white one. So that's why white Maybe. LEDs are actually like yellow in color. And then you can see here. Do you want to zoom in on the RGB LED in the middle? Oh, are those sure. switches? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's let's check out the RGB. LED. We have this new setup with the USB microscope, yeah. and it's like it's, we're getting we're getting used to it. Getting used to it. Whoa, enhance. So RGB LED actually, you know, has three actual LEDs inside of it, oh, inside this package called a lead frame. And so these little squares here, here, and here are the actual LEDs. They're, those are the actual diodes, little pieces of silicon that make the different colors. And then the rest of it is just you got these wire bonds that lead out to the connections. So, so like cool. those are the actual diodes that make the light. The rest of this is just stuff to hold it. So right, like, and then the plastic to uh, keep it from breaking and also diffuse it somewhat, since yep. there's three different LEDs in there. Yep. Here and here. These are what are called fiducial markers. So during automated circuit assembly processes, mm -hmm. there's often like a camera that figures out the orientation of the PCB so it knows how to calibrate the pick and place. I saw it also on this board too. You see, there's one here. Yeah, then... I've seen them on other boards, and I guess I always assumed they were test points for a for pogo yeah, pin jig. Friend, yeah, their friend is over here. But yeah. it, that makes sense. They are for optical. That's cool. Also, you can see it's it's actually a rigid flex board because like the flex is going straight into straight the lamination. In, right. mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The main microcontroller is rigid. number one. It's one, this. Right? You know, it's the yeah, it's the shiny one. Uh, that oh, that here. yeah. Uh huh. There it is. N52, that sounds like a Nordic 52 series. That's, it's, yep. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the a, Bluetooth module and ARM Cortex M4. Yeah, so this will be the main microcontroller. It's got Bluetooth and it also has a Cortex M4 inside. You know, here's the here's the clock for it. Here's the crystal. There's two clocks right near it, though. There's that clock, too, right? Ooh, yeah. um, my question for you, mm -hmm. something I, did, I do not already know the answer to, uh -huh. where's the antenna? Oh, yeah, I was going to look for that. Let's play. Let's play find the antenna. the antenna. Because, and maybe this is a clue, maybe we'll see it on the scan. The outer enclosure that goes over the circuit board mm -hmm. has this, like, plastic part. That plastic uh -oh. part goes all the way through. So the antenna, I thought the antenna has to be underneath here. So where did that go? I don't remember. That's why we'll see it in the scan. But, so, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, why yeah. it's more of a challenge. David, look at the uh -huh. circuit board. Tell me where the antenna yeah, is. Let's see. <laughs> Somewhere on the see edge of the board. see something that looks antenna-ish. My yeah. guess is that this is the antenna, huh. is my right. guess. That's my guess. Okay. We can see. I wonder if we can look inside of this, if we can see it in, when we get to the CT scan. Cool. All right, so that's the first chip. Uh, the second one I was able to find before you got here is the one that says and beak. <laughs> so that's a real-time clock and power management. When they say, what kind of power management is it doing? Is it like voltage regulation or like... Let's look at Let's the data sheet. Your friend, the data sheet. <laughs> so when they say power management, they mean it's like actually dealing with all the sort of power related features. So it keeps track of the time and can also like supervise like turning on and off, like, you know, doing soft resets mm -hmm, and soft powers mm -hmm. on and off to the to the um, right. microcontroller. So that's that one. That's pretty cool. The next one is the battery charge management IC. It's Here. number three. It's right nearby. Yep. And that is a... Texas Instruments BQ25125. Mm -hmm. It's got a buck regulator to 1.8 volts. So that's like, you know, lithium lithium battery nominal voltage is like 3.7, mm -hmm. but often low power electronics want 1.8. So mm -hmm. this will have like a, 
a switching regulator that'll take it down to 1.8 mm -hmm. volts. That's called buck converter as opposed to a boost converter. Right. Boost um, goes up in voltage. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it looks like it'll make the power rails for the chip, for the board, and also make sure that the battery charges in a, in a friendly kind of way. And we can see some big, more square traces than we saw with the antenna mm, coming yeah. out of this thing and going to, what is that? What's that, a resistor? That like a, diode. a diode. Yeah, if, which, so that's probably the, although the other traces for the antenna look fat, these are probably the power. Power, yeah. The only other thing I was able to find online was the brand for the battery, mm -hmm. which is this Zhang Shan Zhang Wande New Energy Technology Co. Oh, and and the battery is a 580 milliamp hour battery. Can you tell us, David, why does this device need such a big battery? Because uh, Peltier coolers are pretty inefficient. Peltier cooler slash heaters are pretty inefficient, and so it probably needs a lot of juice to keep it running for the amount of time that they want to keep it running. Mm -hmm. Again, we see the other part of that little connector that snaps on. And then you'll see this in a lot of batteries, but there's like a... The protection you know, circuitry protection going on there for overvolt and short yeah, protection. Yeah, wrapped up inside, yeah. Uh, that provides extra layer of safety. Yeah. That's the battery. And then this on the left, that connector is for the Peltier. Yeah. Still, though, you can see it's got a huge beefy... It's got a huge beefy... Well, right, it needs a lot of current. It. Yeah, it needs a lot of current, so that's why it's got so much beef. And the inductor is close to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe this could be some kind of like transistor array or something, maybe? Because I bet they're switching in through the transistor. Mm -hmm. 12, 12 and 13 are on the charging the charging base circuit. This looks like a voltage regulator yeah. IC or something like that, because you can see it's got all these decoupling caps. And like voltage this. regulators yeah. often look like this, or yeah. often in that and package. And so you can see this looks like ground plane over here, and mm -hmm. then this looks like, yeah, oh, and it says ground and five, obviously. Okay, yeah, so there's ground <laughs> and five volts. And so you can see there's like this big square of five volts here and then ground is here so that's giving us that's yeah so this is mm -hmm. this is probably voltage regulator chip oh so if this says l1 that l means inductor so this is also that's an probably inductor, an inductor here. and what would that be microcontroller in the middle there yeah well i mean u is does it a need microchip a yeah Probably because it needs to detect when it's plugged yeah, in. Yeah, it's probably some it kind of like... Only deliver power when it's plugged in. Yeah, it's probably like some kind of like USB-C controller slash, slash like power. Yeah. I really like the... So this is the, the USB-C. You really I love really the like inset The inset things because it makes things really skinny. Mm -hmm. And is a good place to hide your TIE Fighter squadron. <laughs> All right, so that's a charge circuit. Do we want to look at any of these other parts yeah. under the microscope? Are you curious about what the um, Peltier cooler looks like? We look at Before it. we look at this, yeah, I've never, I've never seen a Peltier cooler with the with the top part taken off. Like the lid is made out of ceramic, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it, I don't know. It felt it felt really fragile once I took off this plastic mm -hmm. bit. Um, but I, it's interesting to see them create like the this fragile device that has to be at the absolute surface and how they managed to make it um, more durable. Right. 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 All right, you want to look at some scans? Yeah. This video is sponsored by DigiKey, which carries tools for your own teardowns, as well as some of the components in the Ember Wave circuitry. Head to the link in the description for more info on all the parts we could identify. Uh, here's the scan in the LumaField software, and uh, you can see the Peltier cooler right away uh, with all of those little... Uh, Thingies? Dealamabobbers. Yeah. And you can see how the... Oh, look who it is. Yeah. <laughs> right underneath, the, right underneath the, the plastic window. It's our friend, the chip antenna. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you yeah. were right, David. That's oh, exactly yeah. what that is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love seeing uh, the different footprints. Like, they like that you can see that this is a BGA and this is a... What do they call that? QFN? That's a QFN. Well, then, oh. Ooh. <laughs> 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 New VJ yeah. visuals. <laughs> yeah. I just go back to the. Is that a spring up there? Yeah. All right. So here, look. Let's look at the oh, strap I... springs. Look, they saved us this X-ray. This there is the go. strap springs. Yeah, yeah. So this is just a regular watch. When I took this apart, I realized that uh, it's just a regular watch band. Mm -hmm. The battery. Here's the battery. Yeah. So you can see that stack up. It was a. Such a big battery. And see how the Peltier junction is over here, mm -hmm. battery in the middle, and then the board as far away from it as possible. Mm -hmm. You can see the like mechanical button That's there. this, yep. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then this is the dome switch. And that's contacting a little dome switch. And the dome switch, 
is, I guess, is it a dome switch or a tech switch? I'd probably call that a tech switch. Yeah, it does use tiny, a dome. Yeah, it's such a tiny little component. You can see the actual button. You can see the little flexure. Mm -hmm. And that's our uh, friend, the LED. Our friend, the LED. And there's the other LED. Uh, so you can see the like paddle from the button comes down, and then uh -huh. it has those stops. I think it's a clever design. It doesn't use very much flexi PCB, and mm -hmm. we know that like the more times you use flex PCB in your device, the more expensive your device gets. And mm -hmm. so I think it's interesting and seems quite strategic. Um, did we talk about how Peltier coolers work? Why does it look like this? Okay, so it's like alternating pillars of P-type and N-type silicon, mm -hmm. and they're they're placed like thermally in parallel. That's that's why you have this like heat spreading chip here, but mm -hmm. like electrically in series. And so when you put a voltage across it, the current flows through the junctions, and it ends up making a temperature difference on either side. So what's interesting about these is that you can just put voltage one way, and one side will get hot, and one side will get cold. But then if you flip the voltage, the other side will get hot and the other side will get cold. I have noticed when wearing the device that, uh, since I normally used it in cool mode, mm -hmm. um, that the outside of the device gets warm. Why is there a hole? What are these holes? Are they holes? What's going on there? Are those not pogo pin places? Oh, those holes. What are the holes? That's weird, right? Where do you see that? Here. So that's, it looks like this, we're looking at it like this, uh -huh. and it's like down here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't see them yeah. by looking through it. Put like a light behind it or something? Yeah. Because I have seen, I have seen before um, in the, the shine, mm -hmm. that was a fitness tracker a long time ago it had it had like micro holes in it uh -huh. that were too small for water to go through but big enough for light to come through right. and like that's how they had this really fancy animated light pattern mm -hmm. and it was through these like tiny little holes yeah so i'm just i don't know this this is suspicious right <laughs> like i see holes well in conclusion that's what it looks like on the inside uh, what were your favorite parts I like the Peltier Junction because it looks so smooth on the outside, but yeah. looks so blocky on the inside. It's <laughs> like you, a little city. If you zoom in, I bet you can see that like they're connected kind of like in a zigzag on the top and bottom because they're probably like oh, electrically uh -huh. in series. Yeah, for sure. I like the little antenna window and like seeing the chip antenna. I always like seeing antennas on the inside. It is super interesting to see the design considerations connecting the outside and the inside, right? Like, mm -hmm. when I got the device, I'm like, oh, this is an interesting design feature where it's not a complete circle. It has this little, you know, if you if you don't look at the inside, you don't know what that little piece of plastic for, but it has a very important function, and yeah. that's to let the RF signals in let and out. the radio out. out, yeah. Yep, it's true. Yeah, that's really neat. Thanks, David. Thanks, Becky. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Let me know what I should tear down next in the comments. I hope you'll subscribe with the bell to be notified of my future uploads, subscribe to my email newsletter, and find me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This video was made with support from my sponsors and with generous donations from viewers like you through Patreon and YouTube memberships.